Hi, I'm Alan Murdoch. For the past 20 years, I've been buying, fixing, and selling properties right here in Southern Arizona. And I want to buy your property. Whether it's a house, apartment, commercial building, or vacant land, regardless of the condition or the situation, I want to talk to you. When you sell to me, I pay cash and it's hassle-free. No repairs, no closing costs, and no commissions. If you have a property you don't want to deal with and you want a quick solution, call, text, or visit SellTalon.com. Again, that's SellTalon.com. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies.net. We can print anything on our soft vanilla logo cookies. We deliver them and other sweet treats locally. We are located at 4249 West Ina Road, Suite 121. Call us, 520-300-1131. We bake smiles. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies.net. Hey everybody, welcome to the Local Miranda Podcast. It's been a couple weeks, but we got a new episode. I'm glad to jump in. I'm happy to be here as the host. My name is David Samarano. I'm on some other programs you might have seen on Live the Dream Media's podcast network. I also help with directing and some other stuff. I have a, a friend of mine that I've known for a, a long time, long right? Long time, yeah. Probably a decade or more. And uh, he has jumped into business ownership. And yes. we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about Growing up, and you're from Marana, so Marana, it yeah. seems appropriate to have you here yeah. on the local Marana podcast. Yes. And I want to thank you again for being here on this Monday morning that we're doing this. And yeah, thank you. It's great to have you here and introduce yourself so everybody yeah. knows who you are. So my name is Brett Bratton. Uh, I'm owner of Bloom and Blinds here in uh, Tucson, Marana area. Uh, yeah, and I think we've known each other for probably almost two decades, actually. Yeah, I didn't want to say it. That's just how old. <laughs> we, yeah, we're getting up there a little bit. Uh, middle age for sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, it's a pleasure to have you, like I said, man. And, you know, you're doing the Bloom and Blinds. What is that? So Bloom and Blinds, well, it's a franchise, but I own it locally. Um, I We do window coverings, pretty much all things window coverings. Uh, blind shades and shutters is kind of our bread and butter, but we also do like drapery, uh, exteriors, roller shades, uh, and we repair them as well. So, okay. And that, that's kind of one of the things that sets us apart from our competition out there. Uh, there is another uh, blind company in Tucson that does it, but uh, for the most part, most of them don't yeah. touch repairs. So. so it's just you and somebody else that's doing this in this market right now? That does repairs, yeah. So sales... Everybody does. Yeah. Things. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. But the repair thing. Yep. Yeah. Why is that? Thing. Is the repair, are the repairs timely sometimes? Are they? Yeah. So there's not a lot of money to be made in them. Like it's, it's hard to justify, like sometimes it is anyways to come out and like fix something small that might take us five minutes and we still have to charge like a hundred bucks. And, but it's like, people don't realize how much it costs for me to get to your door. You know what I right. mean? The marketing for you to find me, uh, the time, the insurance, the the gas, all of that plays into it. And so, I mean, there's not a whole lot of money in it, but we still do okay. Yeah. Uh, repairs are more for like the long game. You know, we're going to come in, we're going to do a good job. Uh, we're going to fix your blinds, give you more time. And usually when we're coming in, it's like, it's getting close to you where you sell. have to, yeah. to replace. And hopefully we build some rapport and hopefully the customer is willing to give us a shot at selling in the future. So it's kind of a long game. Yeah, strategy. Absolutely. Yeah, smart. The repair's yeah. good. It's a good way to do lead generation. Yeah, yeah. It's a real good way. Uh, it keeps us busy too. So. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's not always going to work out, just like everything else, right? Oh I mean, yeah, of course. Like, I mean, there's definitely stuff where we come in and we can't do it. You know, yeah. Uh, parts are obsolete because uh, the blinds are 30 years old or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or it's just a repair that we just can't do. You know, mm. for the, uh, somebody tears a fabric on a shade. There's nothing we can do yeah. for that. So how do you end up doing this? Because this takes some yeah. balls. Yeah, right? yeah. So, uh, I mean, <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk about what you were doing before this. Yeah. So I, I know you were telling me about the casino or something. But yeah. Let's yeah. even go a little further back and okay. like, start talking about your career moves and how you end up in this. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So uh, I mean, we went to high school together. Yeah. Graduated Marana. Played uh, football. Go Tigers. Yeah. That's kind of a rough a little season. Bit, yeah. <laughs> we weren't that great, but it was still fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so I graduated. Uh, after high school, I went and worked for a vending company right out of high school. Uh, so filled vending machines, mm -hmm. uh, which right out of high school, I was making great money back then. Um, so I was doing that. I dabbled in college, realized that that wasn't for me. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I didn't do that great in high school either. Although my grades were good, I 
I don't feel like it was my jam. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, I was like, okay, working on my working man's PhD. Let's go out there and, and work. What did you say? You're Work, working on your what? Working man's PhD. It's a country song. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good, that's good though. Yeah. yeah. Cause here's, here's the deal. I talk about this all the time, man. Yeah. And you were in school the same time I was, you were sold on the idea. Go to college, go to get college, a loan. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. worry, get a loan. You can pay for it this way. Yeah. And all that stuff. You didn't do that. I didn't do that. No. And you said working man's PhD. Yeah. There's something to learn from being in the workforce. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. Learn dedication, commitment, mm-hmm. right? Accountability, responsibility, responsibility, all that ownership, yeah. being punctual. Yeah. All that yeah. stuff, right? That's real important. It is. Yeah. Tools. I mean, it's <laughs> it's equally important. I think a lot of times college degrees, companies are looking just to see if you're a responsible person. Mm-hmm. Can you can you complete something? I don't think a lot a lot of times they're not even they don't even care about what you learned. It's yeah. all about, you know, were you responsible enough mm-hmm. to get, get your degree? Yeah. Uh, but I mean, of course, I mean, there's value in that, of course, too. So. Uh, I'm not knocking on anybody that went yeah. to college. Yeah, n- same here. But yeah. I, I think that the people that go and get the working man's PhD or working woman's PhD do, do get knocked. Yeah, you they know do. What I mean, that, that, that's obvious to me. Yeah, right. It happens I, I think often. I think the biggest knock on the working man's PhD would be uh, people that go out and they stay in the same position. Or they don't strive for better. Mm-hmm. They don't they don't try and move up or yeah. or transition. Uh, I think that's the biggest knock on on that. Yeah, uh, and I th- I can see that where that could be a problem too. So. Well, I I would say that, you know, if if people aren't wanting to do that, that's on them, and it, you're yeah. get, there's a consequence. Of course, to it. yeah, it's like everything, right? It's, like, well, it's just like going to college and yeah. and getting a degree that doesn't get provide any value. Yeah. you know, it's the same thing. I, I think, think the I think the thing we're seeing right now in our culture is people doing that but expecting more. Yeah. Yeah. Would you agree that that's pretty? That I, I think that, often, yeah. Like. I think a lot of the younger generation comes out and they yeah. Entitlement is like entitlement. It's a big deal. Yeah, we it's were, tough. We were, we were talking. I did a podcast last week with the owner of Pitch Rocks Heating and Cooling. Oh yeah, Ron Arenas. Yep. I'm sure you know. I know. Him, yeah. And uh, his son Alex, and we were talking about the trophy generation because when you and I played football, that wasn't there. No. Yeah. Right. But mm-hmm. um, I went back and started coaching there mm-hmm. a, couple, a couple years later. But oh, like cool, towards yeah. the end of my tenure started seeing the the trophy generation come into the football program. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, the, to- the trophy generation isn't only the kids that are affected by it. It's the parents, too. Because right. the parents brought that about, and they allowed that to happen. So now you had them in the workforce, and then you have the parents That's true. pushing the entitlement. But but you said it, man. Like, not to, No offense to the younger generation, but like the idea that you're going to come out here and get everything right away. Yeah. The world doesn't owe you anything. <laughs> it doesn't owe you and it, anything. And it won't like, yeah. It's I mean, your, your mom will always happen. love you, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the world doesn't, isn't going to love you. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Especially if you're a man, I feel like, but I mean, that's my opinion. <laughs> well, what, why you say that? I, I, I feel like, um, don't be scared to say it on here. We're not regulated <laughs> by the FCC, so. Now nah, I feel like I feel like women tend to get a little bit more love from their friends and family. You know? Yeah, uh, men are expected to uh, thrive. Yeah, and when they don't, you know, it's uh, they don't get sympathy. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. Uh, not always, you know, but I think it's a, a common factor where men feel unnoticed or uh, unloved. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but not always, of course. You know, there's always exceptions. But. Well, something's going on. Yeah. Because right now there are seven and a half million men that are able to work in this country that are refusing to work and not working. That's kind of a scary number. Yeah. 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 Again, it it's is. something we talked to. I talked about on another podcast. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it was even brought up on probably one of Joe Rogan's podcasts or something like that. But so you're saying that. Uh, there's a lot of unnoticed going on. There's not a lot of love going on for, for in. So I, I, another I thing think, is the, the suicide rate is pretty high for guys right now. Yeah. So men, in our age group. men have it. That's kind of a, a rough thing for men to deal with because, yeah. uh, you know, men a lot of times lack that sense of purpose. Mm-hmm. And I think that entit- entitlement mentality uh, leads to like not having a purpose and, that I feel like that corrupts, you know, the mind mm-hmm. of a, a man. I I don't know. This is all speculation, of course, but yeah. It, it so right. Like listeners, remember, we're not 
doctors or psychologists here, but what we're talking about is from life experience and what yeah, we're seeing yeah. and feeling and so the I conversations like, we have with people, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like these these men that are might be entitled come out and they, they expect the world to love them. They expect the, the world to give them everything. And then they come out and they're like, they're not receiving that. And then all of a sudden, and this could, could be true for women too, but uh, I think women can find a lot of purpose in, in having like kids and stuff like that. Men tend to derive purpose out of like what they can give to the world or, mm-hmm. or what they can provide to the world or their family or whatever. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that when you lack that sense of like drive to go out and find your purpose, mm-hmm. um, it all of a sudden you're 30 and you have nothing going for you and, mm-hmm. and you have no experience or life experience because you've been playing video games or whatever it is and uh, or you end up into drugs or something like that, yeah. you know, and I think that's very detrimental in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. No, hey, there's, there's correlations between what you're talking about and the statistics that are here. Yeah. And – I've had some conversations with some pastors and stuff like that. Things they're seeing, um, especially like a college pastor was talking about. Yeah. There's really like a, there's an entitlement thing for sure that I think it's impacting. And I think, yeah. it, I think that goes, I think that goes into our culture mm-hmm. and Kirby hit on it. Kirby's directing. Uh, so listeners, there's somebody else here helping us and he's like the immediate gratitude culture and he's yeah. younger. So how old are you Kirby? He's 22 years old and he's telling me that in his year that he's seeing that. Right. So this immediate gratitude and immediate yeah. uh, gratification, it's it's here. Right. And it, the, the social media doesn't help. No, either, right? Yeah. Like, TikTok, hey, um, every five seconds you get a new like yeah. burst of something exciting. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody's everybody's putting out there that success is what I'm what I'm doing that looks cool or is cool and how much I'm making, how much yeah. money I'm making. Yeah. Like my opinion, being a dad of two now and a follower of God. Like that is not success. Yeah. That is not success at all. My success now is my children's success. Yeah. Which leads to them having purpose, having drive, being kind, taking care of other people, loving other people. Right. Yeah. Without, you're not always going to receive it, but when you're not always receiving it, it could be hard to give love, but you got to give love all the time. Right. Like you you really do. So Mm -hmm. I think it's, um, that's success to me now. Now, when I was younger, <laughs> before all that, yep. I would say probably, yeah, <laughs> what am I doing? What can I afford? What am I buying? But um, I talk to my wife about this all the time. We consider that we we left the rat race um, probably about five to seven years ago. Oh, good. We That's left awesome. it, right? Yeah. Because most people are in it. Yeah. And you know what I'm talking about, the oh, rat course, race, yeah. right? Like, mm-hmm. And then keeping up with your neighbors and what they have and all the nice stuff. You know what I mean? Like we left it. Yeah. We, we, uh, we made a move with real estate and we did some cool stuff and paid off a bunch of debt That's using awesome. Dave Ramsey and some other stuff and out. So when you think about yeah. success now, like, what do you, what do you do at that point? Right. Like yeah. you're <laughs> like, I'm not sitting here saying, Hey, we're rich. We're loaded. And everything. No, yeah, we, yeah. We're out of the race. Cause That's we don't awesome. need to be it no more. Yeah. So I think, um, we could say that like that instant gratification that success model yeah. is BS, right? It's BS. It's totally BS. Yeah. It's not. It's I, not a good I thing agree, to and I think that's the main reason why I made the moves that I did to to get involved in this company. Yeah, let's get back uh, on that. I yeah, took us yeah, down the no, road, but it was good. a good road because yeah, you had a lot road. of good insight, man. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, I mean, making this move is my attempt to escape the rat rat race. So I, I'll kind of go back a little bit. I worked at a vending company for seven years mm-hmm. and I saved my money and whatever. I bought a house real young. Um, not a nice house, but it was a house. And, and, uh, I lived there for like 11 years and I bought it when I was 20 cause I was making good money good, right man, out of yeah. high school and, uh, lived there for 11 years. Eventually, um, ended up kind of getting lucky and, and going and doing a class at the casino they were offering. Uh, the casino has native preference, so uh, Native Americans get automatic preference. They get hired before anybody else, no matter how well they do in the class. And when I signed up for the class, uh, there was, I think, 12 or 14 Native people, and uh, there were 12 or 14 openings mm-hmm. uh, for the casino for dealing cards, uh, blackjack, whatnot. And I went in, and I was like, well... 
I'll do it for fun, you know. I yeah. li- I liked I kind of like gambling a little bit uh for fun. I'm not bad about it. <laughs> uh and um you know, I've always played with like poker with friends growing up and things like that and I always found it, you know, fun and I've been good. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with arithmetic. I wouldn't say I'm good with math in general, but You're arithmetic. Like Rain Man? No, no. <laughs> but uh yeah, I'm 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 decent at it, so I I took the class and I did it for fun and a, a couple weeks prior to me the class ending, uh something happened to where some dealers ended up losing their jobs and it opened up a bunch of spaces and uh, there was like probably 50 other people that were non-native in the class and I was like one of uh, 10 that were chosen or something nice. like that. So uh, I got really lucky there, got on with the casino, was saving my, you know, kind of saving my money there. And, and uh, you know, if you don't know it, d- dealers make, casino dealers make pretty good money. And uh, well, anyways, they were building another casino up in Glendale, mm-hmm. uh, Desert Diamond, and they offered me a job up there. And new casinos are big money for dealers. Uh, and so it was an opportunity. And so I sold my house, moved everything up there, um, got an apartment not far from the casino, which was really nice. And uh, probably like six months into working there, uh, the lockdown hit, COVID lockdown. Mm. And um, yeah, so I I uh, was sitting in my apartment all alone, <laughs> you know, overthinking yeah. and going, you know, my, my original plan was to go up there for five years and then come back. Yeah, and the whole that COVID, got cut a little short. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it got it got cut real short. Um, the the casino life, like it sounds fun, and it is fun at first dealing cards, uh, but eventually it turns into like tedious, uh, almost uh, mind numbing, and eventually you start noticing like the deterioration of people and things of that nature. What do you mean by and that? And like people seeing coming in, yeah, seeing seeing people coming in, like, uh, you know, initially, well, most people don't realize is like when you walk into a casino, it's packed. You think these are just all random people. A good majority of those people come in all the time. What would you say the percentage wise estimate? I, uh, I don't know. I would say probably half. Damn. Half 50%? the fifty per. Maybe, maybe it's yeah. less than that. I don't know, but yeah. it, maybe it's a cognitive bias. But I think that uh. Uh, there's a lot of people that are repeat customers and come in there all the time. And mm-hmm. and some people, you know, they lose everything, you know, eventually. And it's really sad in that regard. On on top of that, there was no sense of purpose when I was there. There's no sense of growth. There was no sense of, um, you know, I don't know, fulfillment is the word I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, was n- there was none of that when I was dealing cards. I was making good money, but I'd get off work and, and have no sense of like, yes, I did that or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was my my biggest like. As I was sitting in my apartment, going, man, I'm like not happy. You know, I have money, but I have I'm not happy. I'm away from my family and friends now, and I was kind of depressed. You really. said it, man. Yeah. I have money, but I'm not happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the money. I was doing well. I would probably be. You know, if I would have stayed, I'd probably be way better off as far as money goes right now. Mm-hmm. I'll, although I think I have more potential with the business uh, in the long run. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I made the move. Uh, basically, I was I went online going because I had sold my house. I made some money I plus was gonna saving ask you about that. Yeah, plus saving. Yeah, and so I was like, okay, I have this money. What can I do with it to get yeah. me back to Tucson and do my own thing? Like, uh, and I ended up uh, not really finding anything that I could do alone. And I was like, I don't know. And I ended up winning, uh, going into like franchises and a franchise is, is like, it's a pre-written business, successful business. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I was like, maybe that could work. And I went on and I, I looked for a couple of days. I was looking through different franchises, probably looked through a couple hundred. None of them fit what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I had like a certain criteria, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to be in an office. I didn't want to be uh, stuck at home. Yeah. I didn't want to, I don't know. I, I, I wanted to be out and about. I wanted to be working with my hands. I want to be working with people. And this was kind of the only thing that fit my budget. 
and um, fit all my criteria uh, was Bloomin' Blinds. And it was the only one I called. And I ended up talking with the CEO for like four hours first day I called him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I hit it off with them. And uh, well, I hit it off with him. And it's owned by three brothers. And they run it. And, uh, well, it's grown a lot since I came on board. So now they have a lot of employees, but at the time it was just the three brothers doing mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I just connected really well with them. I connected, uh, I, I felt like I could, this is something I could do. Yeah. And yeah. So I pulled the trigger, quit the job, <laughs> came back to two. You're your own boss now. <laughs> yeah. I sort of, I feel like the customer, every customer is my boss right now. Yeah. Hey. Uh, they they are right. Yeah, they are. They I mean, are. and, and uh, people say that, but you know, it's like if a customer's like, "Hey, I can't do any day but Saturday." Guess who's coming on a Saturday? Right. Like, right. Um, because I I value money and my customers. So mm-hmm. I mean, most other companies aren't going to do that. So no, uh, or an evening appointment. You know, somebody's like, "Hey, I can only do Tuesday night." I'll probably do it. You know, yeah. if they ask nicely. You know. Yeah, but uh. But yeah, um, there is more freedom in the regards of like if I want to take vacation. Although people don't realize when a business owner takes vacation, he comes back and he got to do all the work still. <laughs> so it's not like a vacation, you know. It's yeah. not a. It's yeah. not like a with work. You can take a vacation, you come back, and it's just work. It's the same thing. <laughs> right, man. Yeah. No. Ah, uh, cool story. Yeah. About that. So wife wanted to get away i wanted to get away too we went up to uh, sedona yeah i think it was like late february or march or something and i was like i knew in my head i was like i had a lot of work to do still right mm-hmm. and my business partner the president clint he he's like don't take your suitcase with you when you go <laughs> you know but i took a, i took a backpack <laughs> and uh my wife was like i'm gonna go to the spa well, i was like go to the spa i'll go work so i was like i'm gonna make it enjoyable somehow so I came with this idea, dropped the wife off at the spa, took my computer and stuff, yeah. and I just hot spotted my phone. And I sat on top of the airplane, or was it the air air airplane vista or whatever it is up there at the top? Yeah. I sat on a rock overseeing all of Sedona, and I just did my work right there on the very top of the mountain That's just cool. sitting outside. Yeah. And I'm like, well... You know what I mean? Because I didn't want to come back to to a mess, right? Yeah, all the emails and then oh, hey, yeah. did you, get, you know what I mean? So because like it's so hard it, to it's, like, it's oh. so hard to enjoy a vacation as a business owner because and you're not awful. Pe- people always expect you know well not everybody but a lot of people expect a quick response and mm-hmm. if you go if you go for a four day vacation and you don't respond to somebody in four days you're in trouble as a business owner like yeah for that customer you know mm-hmm. um, so yeah it's a it's different. It's very different. Uh, a lot, a lot of different stressors, uh, and it's and opposite of the casino life. I feel like every day is a learning experience. Every day I'm growing. Every day I have a sense of purpose. Every day I have a sense of fulfillment. You know, when I walk out of a customer's home and and everything is better, you know, or not everything, but their their house is better after I'm leaving and they're happy and smiling yeah. as opposed to the casino where it was, they were mad at me every time they left. Well, not every time, but a lot of the times they're mad at me because I hey, took their money, t- <laughs> you know, Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> took their money and didn't provide any oh, kind of value. Man. You know, that's hard. Yeah. Man. yeah that's so. hard. I can't even imagine, dude. I can't. Yeah. I can't. It's, it's tough. And it, it's, it looks like a fun job and it is sometimes, you know? Yeah. Um, how do you feel like, how do you feel mentally? Mentally, how do you uh, feel like uh, with yeah, with like your like your emotional being being your own franchise owner? Do you feel yeah. a lot more clarity in it? No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say clarity. No, that's not that's not what I got. No, what you got? Uh, I mean, I, there's a there's a roller coaster of emotions every always day, every day. But yeah. the, you know what, dude? You don't. Even, I don't know if you realize it, but that's why you like it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You like to rush, don't you? Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. You get those big wins. You're like, yeah, I got yeah. This I mean, it, yeah, it is, it is a it, to a point. It is days. a game. Yeah. You know, you go out and you're you're trying to not you're not trying to manipulate people because that's that has a negative connotation, but you're trying to 
you know, build rapport really fast. You're trying to convince them that you are trustworthy. Right. And, uh, you, and you're trying to convince them that your product is going to be something that they're going to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, a lot of that is a game to a point, you know, you're trying to do your best strategy right. to, uh, make the sale or make them like you or mm -hmm. whatever it may be. And every day is like, you're trying to critique yourself. You're going, you're going, you're leaving that appointment going, man, I should have said this, or maybe I should have said that, or I don't know. And then when you do leave and you got the sale, you're like, you know, you, you get that rush of excitement, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's good too. And, uh, but beyond that, you know, there's always that sense of fear and that sense of, you know, rejection that's going to inevitably happen. Like I get rejected constantly you yeah. know not not constantly but like compared to a normal person that doesn't do sales like rejection is something yeah. that's normal in sales yeah and that's what a lot of people don't realize too is when you do this you have to make sales like yeah. nothing's again yeah. nothing's coming to you nothing's coming the to world me. doesn't owe you any anything nobody Nothing. owes you owns you owes you clients yeah most people aren't going to give you clients because they're your competition yep right so yep. Uh, you have to go and make those sales. So yeah, rejection is something. Again, man, I can relate to across yeah. this table. Like you, you, you put together a great proposal. You go to meetings, and it doesn't happen. It doesn't but there's happen. also this thing, this crazy thing that happens too with relationships. I'm sure mm -hmm. you've had this happen. But you start a conversation 12 months ago, mm -hmm. and a year later, it turns into a client. Yeah, that it's, happens. That does happen sometimes. So, yeah. And so you're in this like you're in uh, what would you care? You're in limbo. Yeah. <laughs> until, yeah. Until, but you know what, you know, they call that pipeline sales. Yeah. So like you're, you're constantly feeding your pipeline, mm -hmm. uh, with everything you do, really, you're yeah. trying to feed that pipeline of potential sale down mm -hmm. the road. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I've definitely had where, you know, I had a chat with somebody about it, you know, a year ago or whatever. And then all of a sudden they're calling and, and I'm going in and, and doing my thing and, get yeah. a sale or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that definitely happens. Right. I don't know. So how long have you been doing this now? Three years, almost a little over three years. Yeah. There's this, uh, old myth that five years is like this. That's tipping the, point kind yeah, of thing. That's the tipping point where you like either, either go or you <laughs> stop. <laughs> that's scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's, I don't know how true that is. You know what I mean? I, I think, think it's true to a entering point. entering year four here. Yeah. So you and I kind of started not too far off from each other. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think that there's some validation to that. Uh, I do, I feel like even three years in, I feel like I'm still volatile. Like mm -hmm. I could I could fail, you know. Uh, I don't want to fail. I don't plan to fail. Yeah. But it could happen. Um, you know, I haven't exploded, you know, yet. You know... That explosion thing. Dude, let me talk about this. Hold yeah. on. Yeah. I'm trying to think how I'm going to word this. I always envisioned the big, like the big sale or like the big client is like this um, confetti falling from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. and it's just because of what you grew, you know, you see movies and stuff. You see, like, oh my gosh, we're, you know what I mean? It's great. It's cool and all that. But I can tell you that being through something kind of, kind of like that um it's not like that at all <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like business as usual it's it's actually it like be. a you how it felt for for us is it's this impactful understanding of responsibility yeah it's changed mm -hmm. right it used to be like hey we're going and doing these things but now it became like you have this this big thing to take care of. Yeah. It's like, it's like having a, a, a kid. Essentially, yeah. right? Like you have to nurture yeah. and take care of this kid. Like it and is help them grow. Like, yeah, that's what we do. Right. We make, make things happen. We help businesses grow. And, yeah. um, <laughs> the confetti did not fall. <laughs> uh, you know, there's not people coming in, running in with bottles of champagne, but what you do get out of it is you get the experience and the opportunity. Yeah. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, this explosion thing, maybe it'll happen for you. Well, I don't know. Maybe someone's well, going to come, but, uh, I, I don't know if explode is the right word, but I, I think that as a business, you, it's kind of like a, the snowball effect. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you start out real tiny 
and then you start to to grow and grow and as you grow you tend to start growing faster right and um i feel like i'm still kind of like in the in the process of growing but i i'm i'm like right on the cusp of potentially like building that ball up you'll quicker. get there bro um I know you, man. Yeah. I do. I've known you for a long time. Yeah. You can I, see a I lot. Think, you can learn a lot from somebody in sports. Yeah, yeah. Show I, up. I don't know. You'll get there. We'll see. Um, if it, and if it isn't blooming blinds, it might be something else. It you might be, know. Yeah. You never know what the plan yeah, is, right? Yeah, I, you know? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm very sold that this is going to be my, my life. Good, um, you should be. Good, yeah. Because that's your baby now, right? Yeah, it so. is. Yeah, so I, I mean, at least for the next, you know, 10, 20 years. So. Uh, but, you know... I've been definitely putting myself out there and mm-hmm. and and uh, really trying to grow. I mean, I hired my brother on back in January. That's awesome, man. Yeah, so that's good. And uh, you've definitely been out there. I mean, that's how we ran into each other. Yeah, I don't yeah. go to I don't go to any network, dude. That was like that's like a rare thing I go to. Bro. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, how do you feel about all that stuff? Uh, networking, like going to the chambers and stuff like. I that. mean, how I, do you feel? What do you mean? How do I do you, about... do you do you feel like it's worth it? The time you're there, um, like add them up. I don't know yet. Six months. So I so <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, I didn't network for the first couple of years because COVID. Uh, there wasn't really any right. networking yeah. events and mm-hmm. whatever. And I've kind of been since last year. I've been kind of really trying to network because I think there's a lot of value in it. So I do there think there's now. value. Absolutely. Um. I can't say that I'm good at it because I've only been doing it since probably like, I don't know, November of last year. I've been like really trying to get out there. And I think for the first probably six months of doing it, I did it wrong. Uh, I think that I went out and I was just trying to meet everybody. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to touch everybody at a networking event. Mm -hmm. Say hi, introduce myself, tell them what I do. Say hi, introduce myself. How many business cards did you get? Uh, I mean, I've handed out. How many did you get, though? Oh, I've gotten a million. <laughs> I got stacks. Because everybody's trying to do the same thing I know, with me. I know, I know, man. You know, I, and, which is fine. That's I'm cool. just having fun with this perspective thing. Yeah, I've yeah. Been down this, I've been down oh, this road. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I think I, we'll talk about it after yeah. this. But I, yeah, I'm just seeing where you're at. I want to yeah, see. Yeah, so, so I'm realizing that that doesn't build a lot of – that doesn't build anything. All, all – most people are going to forget you right out the gate, just like I've forgotten most of those people that have given me their business cards. Right. And uh, so there's not a lot of value in that. And I've realized that in order to really get value is to sit down like this and talk to this somebody. This going to be huge, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and not necessarily the podcast, which that's going to be huge too, mm-hmm. I, th- I think, you know, if people listen to it um, or when people listen to it, I should say. Yeah. Um, but it's more so like just sitting down and getting to know somebody mm-hmm. and having them getting get to know me and really building like a relationship with somebody. Dude, lunches are powerful. Huge. Coffees. Oh, dude. Yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> those those are the, the people that I've sat down with so far, and I've only been doing it for a few months, um, are way more likely to, to remember me and mm-hmm. refer me out. Yeah. And uh, I've realized that I, you know, the first six months, it was a little bit of awareness. Like people were starting to remember me, mm-hmm. but like it hasn't. That didn't bring me a whole lot of referrals. Right. Um, right. I think that now that I'm starting to realize that I need to sit down with people and and really build that relationship with people is is huge. And I think it's going to be valuable for those people too with me because mm. I'm more likely to refer them out if they're sitting down with me. Right. You know. Yeah. I'll remember their name. I'll remember their company and uh, so on. Yeah. We should refer each other to people. Yeah. <laughs> I will, man. I, I, I will. I just haven't gotten the opportunity, man. I no, you're found. good. I think as we get closer to like next summer, we'll probably have a couple, but I cool. might even hit you up. Yeah, cool. Um, But uh, yeah, man, I, <laughs> the same thing, dude. I went to a couple like events and I'm like. This ain't my gig, man. Like, you know, it was, uh, and no respect, no disrespect to them. They are, yeah. they're, they're, they're perfect for what they're supposed to be. Yeah. And uh, what I found out was, I was leaving. Even the young profession, the young professionals one, dude. Honestly, that was probably the one that I was. Uh, I've never been taken that by that was not very good. Oh, okay. And it was, 
like we went somewhere. I'm not going to say where we went and who was involved, but basically we went somewhere and it was just a lot of like, it wasn't focused mm. at all. Yeah. And, um, and people were just handing out cards and that's all it was. And every card I ha- every other card was a real estate agent, insurance agent, real estate agent, insurance agent, real estate agent, insurance agent. Yeah. Like it wasn't like I didn't meet Brett's. Yeah. Right. I didn't yeah. meet owners. And I'm like, I was looking at tight. Like I was looking, I was like, okay, there's nobody here that like, I, I was like, I could go get insurance or whatever else, but like I, none of them are going to use me. Yeah. Like I know that already. They yeah. all have their own companies that do all their stuff already. So I was like, Oh, this isn't working. Mm. And then, uh, you know, I, I found out quickly that that wasn't kind of where I needed to be. I needed to be in my, like a mentorship kind of thing. So that's kind of the route I went after oh, that good, because yeah. I, they are, like I said, they're good for what they are. You're going to see me pop up at stuff. Like you saw, we saw if it, nobody knows this, but we saw each other at the Miranda pumpkin patch, um, for the ribbon Miranda, cutting. Yeah. Miranda chamber held a ribbon yep. cutting. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we really, we love John post and what he does yep. and we really support him and we were out there and we support the chamber too. Yep. And, what they're doing but uh yeah we were just out there because we've done that every year is go to that event for sure because yeah. it's so, so miranda oriented and we it is local miranda and our new our new uh media uh blog and all that and this is miranda is our new one yeah cool which is really cool but uh yeah man i saw you and we were like let's just let's go talk man yeah. like let's go do a podcast and stuff like that but yeah, other than sure. that it's you and i and ron arenas and a couple other things there really wasn't like i wasn't going out and you know, uh, story I'm in line and there's a guy I'm in line with Tammy who owns Copper Creek cookies right here. Yep. We're just going in line to get food. And this guy goes, what are you doing here? Like what? What, what do you mean? Like we're, we're here for the event. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah. Are you, what are you here? I'm like, we're here for the people. People. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> we're here for the people. Yeah. He grabs his <clears throat> Hands me his business card. I'm like, <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> like I it try, didn't, didn't want like, I, I really <laughs> try not to be that guy. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm like, hey. I might have been that guy at the beginning yeah. when I first went out. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I was that aggressive about it. Really. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's good. I I didn't want to. I I never wanted to be like that either. I yeah. don't want to. Like, I, we do we do sales. Like we don't. The crazy thing is we don't do a lot of sales. Like we don't go out and like. Yeah. Because we don't have to. Right. And I think that's been a. A blessing Good. so far, but um, and it's been because of the networking you were talking about, going to lunches, going to doing those things, going to the pumpkin patch. I yeah. think some stuff has happened from that, but um, but no relationships have been the key thing for us. Yeah, number one, number one, number one, number one, relationships. I think that's true. Yeah. I think it's I'd say networking true. after that, but relationships was one. Yeah. Networking two, you know. What I, mean? I think I think you, I think the mindset should be going to these networking events to find the relationships. Right, and that's what's hard though. Yeah, that's hard. So like. All, all of the people, not all of them, but most of the people that are at those, they're getting paid hourly to be there. Yeah. They work for somebody. That's true. That's you and true. I don't, or Clint and Tammy, who are, we don't get paid for being there. No. There's nobody yeah. cutting us a check for going to that yeah. event. Like, so when you're taking away time to go to those, it's, it's really hard for me at this time to go, yeah, this adds up to. Yeah. You know I mean? If you're going to look at, if you're going to be a nerd and go ROI in, re- in relation to what I'm doing. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I don't. Yeah. It's a little different for me though cuz I'm single. I don't have kids. Uh You're right. Yeah, man. You yeah. It's, you it's should a lot just be different. like running with the torch everywhere. Yeah, I am. Like. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm out there so uh Yeah, I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, relationships Kirby said he's single too. Re- relationships haven't worked out Thanks, for me, Kirby. so. Yeah. Uh, hey, you know what? 99% of them don't work <laughs> out. So <laughs> if you're like if you're looking for, you know, don't it's what I tell Kirby all the time. Kirby's in the director in here and he's like yeah, he talks about stuff all the time, and I'm like, dude, don't even. When you're not looking, it's when it's gonna. Happen. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of where I'm at. I'm, uh, 99 percent of my focus is on the business. And that's awesome, dude. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a blessing for sure, dude, to be able to do that. Cause yeah, there's a lot of people that go into point. this stuff and they've already got this whole like this whole life the whole behind, life, right? right? Yeah. Like all this stuff to take care of. Yeah, you get to go on this and just like. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean my my <laughs> my, my <laughs> attachment malfunctions have uh have led to to me being able to do this so that's good man. yeah don't yeah. sweat it man i yeah. think it's uh <laughs> ain't yeah no woman no cry man ah uh, that's fair <laughs> that's fair good old I, bob marley i think i think that's a that's a there's a lot of truth to that you know because i think that that's one of the main reasons that i've stayed 
single and the times that I've been single is because of the previous heartache, you know. It's yeah. like, F that. I don't want yeah. that, you know. Dude, I went years where yeah. I was like, I'm not. Same. Not even going to. I was like, I'm just going to get stuff done. Yeah. And I fun. went years and was single and then I tried it again and I <laughs> went through all the pain again and, and okay now I'm single again I, I think I'll just stay this way for a little while who yeah. knows though maybe I'll find somebody yeah maybe some some lady I'll uh yeah. watch this podcast or this <laughs> podcast like all right, right. Yeah, yeah let's go hey ladies no <laughs> <laughs> just like I'm gonna help you yeah <laughs> dude it's been awesome having you on here man yeah um, definitely I appreciate it I really uh wish you the best with your endeavor man and I hope you Thank you. Her super successful. I don't, I don't have any real doubts. Like I'm not like, uh, like, dude, you're selling stuff that defeats the sun in the desert. Like, <laughs> how do you lose, bro? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's fair, <laughs> but also there's like, like a lot of other blind companies here in Tucson. So yeah, how many would you say there are in this area? Um, if you include like Home Depot and all them, like probably like fifteen. Like yeah, but they don't come and install it as fast as you do, though. Like uh, response wise, no, There's probably no, not. No, like, not Home Depot or Lowe's I've tried to or do Costco. With, sorry, one of those yeah. places. They, for, it's like weeks out. Sometimes yeah. months. I'm like, I was hoping to have this in like yeah. two weeks, but but there, if you if you're saying like companies like me, probably yeah. ten. I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably around ten, maybe mm-hmm. more. I don't know, but I mean, I feel like that's a lot. So yeah. What's your plan to stand out? I just keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, networking, going out, building relationships, referrals are huge. Uh, I've been working on growing my social media. Uh, and, you know, uh, I mean, this, this is great. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, hey, we're going to cut this yeah. up into reels. There's yeah. going to be stuff going around. People yeah. are going to see all this that. Awesome. You know what yeah. I mean? So uh, that's cool. cool. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to cut it, man. Yeah, awesome. I got to go to a lunch. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta we'll go, go to lunch soon, though. Uh, yeah, I'm we'll, down for that. We'll I do got, that for sure. I got a, an appointment right now, too. That's so good. I got to get to. So That's good. Works. Well, appreciate you being here, man. Hey, thank, thank you so you. much.